In today's show, we're going to talk about Power Apps SVGs. And so SVGs are little HTML controls that we can build and design. But more importantly, what we can do is we can pull these into our apps to make them more user friendly and much prettier, right? So you guys like pretty apps? I want to show you how to build pretty apps. So I promise not too nerdy, but a little nerdy. So anyway, should be fun. But first, here's our intro. Hi, my name is Shane Young with Power Apps 911. Those guys. And today, we're going to learn about Power Apps SVGs. And so, SVGs, these are an HTML concept. They also have something to do with things on Pinterest, but I didn't understand what that was about. So, not worried about that part. What we're worried about, though, is that SVGs, scalable ve vector graphics, are a way that we can build our own graphics, animations, and things like that. And so, what we're going to do is we're going to incorporate those into Power Apps by stealing a bunch of other people's co code manipulating it a little bit, but to make our apps look nicer, add visuals like progress bars, indicators, you know, little animations, just little little things that make your apps a lot, lot nicer, all right? So, I don't know, that's enough about that, right? I've been messing with these for two days to make this video, so I'll switch over to my desktop so I can finally show someone what I built, yeah! Hang on, let's go over there. Okay, so here on my desktop, oh, before I show you this, I want you to see, watch, we're gonna make this thing animate. So I'm gonna go back, I'm gonna go say even cooler, and so look at this, this is our gallery control. And so over there on the right, these indicators, these are actually SVGs. And so what they're doing is they're showing us kind of our progress. And I just used some built-in numbers in my data set so I didn't have to recreate things. But you can see that they dynamically expanded and it corresponds with their wage versus $100 an hour. All right, so you can see Chewy is yellow. You can also, if you look really hard, I tried to make some fireworks, but my fireworks aren't awesome, so. A little firework explosion. Anybody over $75 an hour gets uh, that. Oh, I would also like to tell you, Nicola wanted me to tell you guys, no one, Allison does not make $4.75. It's okay. Calm down, right? So anyway, you can see that's a pretty cool little visual. Over here, we also, we said, hey, what about if we had something that took and looked at Chewy's exercise time? So we press this, we come in, whoop, and it will actually grow over three seconds and show you kind of the progress. And so here we're kind of using it with a text input, but in reality what we could do is once I explain to you how this all works, you can actually just plug in numbers there, whether you go fetch those numbers from a lookup against the data table, or maybe you are calculating those on the fly, it doesn't matter, right? Once you understand how these things work, it's really just about doing that. You might have also noticed, here we'll go back here and then come back again, down here at the bottom, I built a little animation for Powered by Power Apps. Ooh. And then finally, uh, we won't get into too many of these, but here's some different examples of some different uh, SVGs that I've been playing with over the last couple of days. Because, you know, we had a customer project that we're working on right now. We're in the POC phase. And one of the things they want is some more visual flair. So I was kind of playing with some different concepts here around the visual flair. You see this little firework thing? Yeah, I made that. <laughs> It's terrible, but uh, you know, I stole some stuff and I, and I massaged it. So anyway, so that's what we're gonna do in this video is walk you guys through some of these pieces. So probably the easiest thing to do to start though is let's, let's, let's back all the way up before we get into all this craziness, because there's craziness there. Let's just make ourselves a new screen and let's build a little bit of this, right? So in order to use an SVG, what you need to do is you're going to have an image control. So I'm gonna go up here to media, insert an image control, or you know you could have used the plus to get to the image control, right? I, it's so weird to me that all of a sudden, you know, this is kind of like, especially if you're in Oakdale, you have to use this. But anyway, so now we've got an image control. So up here in the image, we've talked about the past, you know, this could be an image you attach to your app. This could also be a image you look up from SharePoint or some other type of data source, a URL to an image or it can be the HTML code, which like we talked about in that base 64 video. So what I found though, is if I go back over here, let's just go steal some stuff real quick. So we go back to examples. We're gonna copy everything out of here and then we'll explain it. Control A, Control C. So we'll go over here. And so if we paste this code, oh here, we'll pull this down so you can see what's going on. So here's the code. So this top part, this will never change, right? But this is saying, hey, the thing I'm about to give you is an SVG, it's an image, it's an SVG plus XML. So you don't ever have to change that. But where we're gonna have all of our fun is down here inside of, we're gonna write some HTML that uses the HSVG object 
And we're just using encode URL, so that way it does all the escaping of the spaces and all that. We don't have to worry about all that. But at its core, that's what we're going to do, right? This is the set of code that we need to manipulate. So now that we kind of have an idea of what we need to do, where do we get these things? So where I started was I went out to SVG tutorial, right? Of W3 schools. We've talked about this. This is what I recommend. Anytime you have to learn HTML, I start with these guys because they're awesome. And so I was like, hey, I want to make a circle. So I went here to SVG circle and then I look, here is the code to make that circle. I'm like, perfect. So typically speaking, when I'm stealing code from these things, I'm going to grab this, just the, um, the actual object, right? So control C, I'm not going to try and steal all this SVG portion. I could, but then I got to kind of massage that over and over again. So now that I've got that, what I want to do is I'm going to open up notepad. And so in notepad, I'm going to paste that in. And the reason for that is they use double quotes. Boo. We know in power apps, that means strings and we want to have single quotes. So then I'm going to hit control H. And I was going to say, find all the double quotes and replace them with single quotes. Replace all, cancel. I promise by the end you'll do that so many times it'll be like second nature. So now I can copy that back out. And so then now we'll go over here and we're like, all right. So let's just get rid of everything between the SVG tags and let's paste that in. And look at that. We got a red circle. Very cool. And so if you start to look at it, it's not that terribly complicated what happens here, right? So in the circles case, CX, that is the X coordinate of the circle. So you can see that it is 50 um, pixels to the right and then it is 50 down. And so then it's like, oh, hang on, I'm gonna change something real quick. I'm gonna change this up here to just say 100 by 100. Make this make more sense. Okay, we'll, we'll come back to why I changed that in just a moment. All right, so 50 is the X and then 50 is the Y. And the radius, you know how, right? Remember radius from geometry class? So it's 40. Stroke, well, that is black. So that's got to be that outside border. Stroke width is three. So that must be the thickness. And the fill is red. Well, so this changes. What if I want a stroke width of seven? Look at that. Just like that, it changed. I didn't have to do anything. I didn't have to reload anything. But that's important to understand is that all this thing cares about is you give it a number right there. So what do we know from Power Apps, right? Well, I can give it a number any way I want. So maybe we want to do a, um, a slider. So we just throw a slider on the screen. We'll pull it down, pull this back down. And so then now I can say, hey, I want your stroke width, right? What would we do? Delete that out. We do closer text, ampersand, slider one dot value. And like that, and then open up that. And so then now it's way too big, but if we hit play, right, as we dynamically do this, we're changing the size of the, the black bar. So that's the important thing to understand is, you know, that code at first we looked at is really intimidating. But in reality, when you realize, hey, this is just a number, then just make the number be a number and you're in good shape. Also, so then up here at the top, you know, we kind of had this beginning section. So this SVG, this defines this as being an SVG object. And so what I've been doing for most of them, sometimes you get in a weird scenario, you gotta adjust these. But for right now, basics, height is 100%, width is 100%. And so then this view box thing, what this does, <laughs> I have a hard time with this thing, but what this is really doing is defining the actual size of the box. And so in this case, we said, hey, make the box, the amount of screens real estate that we can see 100 by 100. Like it's, think of this as like the bottom right coordinate. And so then all of these numbers scale according to those numbers. That's why when I first came in here and this was like 400, you know, this guy's way over here because now I'm saying the X, right, this point right here was 400, but the Y is 100. So it's having to do like its own version of math. But if you can keep this, in a nice square setting, what's great about it, and this is one of the fun things about SVGs, if I grab this and pull it out, because the numbers are relative to that 100, right, it's just resizing itself. So I don't have to re-change my numbers. I just move it around and it does what it wants, right? And I move this, oh, and then if we hit play here, right, and we can still change, Wee. So, so very important to understand. <laughs> And, and I definitely encourage you guys to go learn more about Viewbox. I get a real nerdy explanation of it, but for me, once I kind of got the idea that this is the, 
you know, so this is where it starts. This is the top left corner, so zero by zero, which is typically what you want. And then the, this is the bottom right. And by keeping the dimensions square and then building my object in there, it makes it a lot easier for me to control kind of the sizes of that. Okay, so that is how we start to build this stuff. And if you're like, well, that's great, Shane, but that's just a stupid um, circle. What if I wanted something a little more complex? Well, then I go over here and make, all right, well, how about let's go check out um, rectangles, right? And the rectangles, look down here, they got a nice one with some corners and some fun stuff. And so same type of deal. I'm just going to copy this out. I'm going to go through Notepad again, paste that in, and then say Control H, and then replace all, cancel. Like I said, I've done this a thousand times. And so then now we're back over here. And so then we go in and we'll just get the circle out of the way and we'll paste it in the rectangle. And so now you can see that, well, look, it's in there, but it's not exactly right. And that's because it's bigger than my view box. So maybe what I really want to do here is say, well, I probably want you to be more like 150 by 150. Oh, that's still not big enough because the X starts at 50. Oh, let's we'll start the X at zero and then the Y at zero. Oh, but that's chopping off all the corners, so then we'll do like 10. And this is kind of the fun game you get to play. And then we'll just bump this up to 200 by 200. There we go. And so it's not taking up all of that space, but it's pretty close. And so then now, because we've kind of got that, we have, you know, some control. And if I wanted to, you know, we could really probably, so I think it's the corner radiuses that are messing it up. So we could probably go down like 175. And then 175, what does that look like? There you go, so that's a little bit more filling. So you just have to kind of play with it to get your object to show up. And it's really just remember, this is setting the scale and you just wanna make sure your object fits inside the scale that you've got. But these, okay, so let's look at these numbers, right? So X, so that's how far to the right it was. So it's 10 paces. And then Y, it's 10 down, or pixels, not paces. <laughs> weirdo then this is the uh x radius so let's just change it i don't know what that does let's change it to 40. oh it kind of flattens out the thing right and if we change this one to zero oh well, that's probably not work i'll do 10. so we got kind of like a weirder shape right but we start to be able to control and modify these different properties and then that's what's determining how this fills out width height i think those make sense to you and so then here you can see that You'll see when you borrow SVGs from other people's sites, sometimes they do things like this. So in this case, they defined it all as just one CSS style. So style, and so then you can see you kind of got these in here. Fill is red, semicolon, stroke is black, stroke width is five, and opacity, right? How see-through is it is uh, 0.5. So if I, all right, well, what if I make this green? Oh, okay, right, does what I want. What if I make this blue? Right, all kind of makes a lot of sense. So that's a way of doing it via style, but you, if you don't like styles, you could spend the time, you could get rid of this and change this to be like fill equals green like this, get rid of that. And then, oh, well, here, let's put the style back just so I don't have to type a whole bunch for you guys. But so style equals that. And so then now we get the same effect, but it's written differently. So that is one of the other confusing things is sometimes they'll use styles, sometimes they won't, but there you go. So that's, that's a great example of, you know, a square. Um, so then, and, and I know it's like, you're like, Shane, I don't care about circles and squares, but you have to start here. You have to wrap your brains around these controls this way, because once you do, then all of a sudden you're like, hey, I want to try a, um, how about, let's see, let's go to their examples. So let's go a little more complex, right? A quadratic Beezer curve. What, oh, I, I don't even want to miss that. Uh, but so we could do like some uh, filtering. So what does this one do? Oh, so it kind of gives you that drop shadow look, right? So you can see that in here, they've defined more things, but at the end of the day, it's just it's just a little bit different. Um, you know, the one that I was having the most fun with was like the, the uh, gradients. I just think that those are very interesting. That's kind of what you're after. And so here, we'll grab this one. So look at that, that's pretty neat. Same deal, I want this in my app. What am I gonna do? I'm just gonna copy out everything in the SVG. This, sorry, your browser doesn't support it. We're not gonna pull that in, you could, but I'm gonna grab that. So we copied that, we'll go through our notepad again. All right, I edited a notepad and edited that out so you don't have to watch me do it. 
And so then now if we go back over here, so then now we can kind of pull in and paste. And so once again, look, it's outside the scope and that's because our box is smaller than our objects. And I kind of knew that when I stole from these guys because I could see that they originally defined theirs as 150 by 400. So what I would probably try and do is go over here and be like, hey, if I change you to be, let's just make you uh, 400 by 400. I like square, square makes more sense to my brain. What does that look like? Oh, look, there he is. And so then now, oh, but see, so because it's so uh, tall, so then now we'll try changing this down to the 150. Oh wait, this would be 400 by 150 this way. We'll do 175, give a little space. There we go. And so then now I can kind of move this thing around and get my sizes, but you see the gradient and you're like, oh, I want to change that text to say cool, right? Oh, well, right there's the word. And so cool. And so then now that you understand that that is text, there's nothing stopping you from making that a text input or making any of these colors, right? So in this case, it's got a two color range. Oh, this is using an RGB function. What if I change this to be blue and I change this one right here to be pink? And what do we got? We got a whole different size, shape. Well, it's kind of more of a, um, you know, if this was an Easter theme instead of a Halloween theme. But same deal with the ellipse. We got a CX. We got some different, uh, so, right, where's the X did it start? Where'd the Y did it start? And then the radius is X, the radius is Y. The fill, they are using a um, class which was they defined up here, right? So if you look, linear gradient ID grad one, so this is how they were able to define the linear gradient as the fill color that they wanted. And so then they were able to put it down here. And it turns out with these, if you wanna add a third color in the middle, so we got blue, we got pink, how about we add yellow in the middle? I'm gonna paste this in here and be like, hey, I wanna start at 50 with yellow and so then, yeah, not exactly what I wanted, but, but that kind of feel, oh, okay, I typed in five, that's why. I was like, why doesn't it look the right way? There you go. And so now we've got this, once again, very Easter looking thing. I guess I should have saved this video for Easter. Um, but, you know, the, the key thing here, a couple things, right? One is just try things, right? Try, try, try. I just, that's, I just guessed that that's how that would work and I was right. You know, I mean, I, I guess like yesterday when I figured it out, but but try different things, see how they behave, and don't be afraid to just edit these numbers or these texts. And then also remember, there's just nothing stopping you from what if I wanted to change this to be the logged in user's name, right? What do we do? Well, we'd be like, all right, so we got to replace cool. So we're going, I'll just delete out cool. I'm going to close that text stream because it's really just a big text stream. Here we'll just do user, oh, user dot full name and then we'll close that out and then we got to open this one back up and so then now we have the shane easter egg and my easter egg is not big enough so then i need to do something dynamically to make it bigger to fit uh that crazy shane right so let's just try changing this to be like 80. i don't even know what this does i didn't try this in the practice oh that was the wrong one see but that's what happens so control z I say control Z, yeah, you guys know. It doesn't always work. 55, and we'll change this one to be 100. What does that do? Oh, look at that. Now we've got a more larger chain. And the font, you know, you can see, you get some ideas around the different font colors. Oh, well, I want a purple font, not whatever that number, or whatever that is, that's white. So we'll just type in purple. Font size is 45. Oh, look, the X starts at 150 and the Y starts at 86. Interesting, right? So maybe let's just change this to like a five font. So that way I can get it into, oh, there it is, right? So this is the stuff you do. You just play and that's how you understand these. So now that we've played a little bit, now you've got an idea how these work, let's go talk about the, the cool things that I've built. So if we go over here to SVG demo app, so the big one I wanted you to see here was, you know, whenever I changed how many minutes Chewie's been exercising, which is more like 12, it will automatically progress. So I put this in a customer's app. They wanted it when the salespeople logged in, they could kind of see where they were at a goal and a little animation just made it a little nicer, right? They didn't use these ugly purple and green. So how did I do it? I don't know. 
Let's click on it and take a look. I will also remind you if I, man, I just want to, if you want to steal all this stuff, remember you can go to training.powerapps911.com and sign up for the curated library and you can download this app with all of this code already written for you. So just a reminder. All right, so here you can see, I kind of did my normal SVG, my box. Um, and so here I actually have three circles. So I have one circle, right, this first circle, and it looks like it's a fill of the white. So that was my white center. Oh, okay. And then I had the ring, which is going to be, I believe this is my purple one. And I know that because my Power Apps 911 purple. But so you can see that that is how it defined that outer ring. Because it's not really an outer ring. All it is, is like if we get rid of the white donut, control X. Oh, Power Apps are killing me. Doop. Control Z. I said undo. Ah, so I got to get rid of that and I got to change the fill for this one. Let's change the fill to this one to be red. See? Oh, the red is on top, right? Because the white is underneath. So we're just stacking. But because I made that second circle transparent, that is why I got to type in the word transparent. That is why it is just showing you through all the way to the background, which is white. So now if we change that top line to yellow, all right, so what I'm really trying to say here, and I think I did a bad job of it, is that this is actually just three circles stacked on top of each other. That's how this is being built. This is not a special image or a special type of graphic. These are just three circles. So, so far we've talked about the white one underneath, which is now yellow. We'll change it back to white. We have the second one, which I made the fill transparent and just said its stroke width of seven is what makes that outside purple. And so then the third one here, same circle, right? Same dimensions. But you can see that the fill is transparent again. The stroke is green. The stroke width is seven. And so then what we did was we used something called stroke dash array. And so we're not going to go cover that right now. But if you went over here to stroking, you would see that dash array is a property that lets you build lines that are like uh, intermittent. So dot, dotted lines, dash lines. Because a lot of times you're going to find that what you want to do is change the size of the dash. And that's actually how you build the thing. Because that's what we're going to do here is we are going to say, all right, stroke dash array. And so what is the sto stroke dash array? It is the percent complete. And so what is percent complete? Well, that's a Power Apps control. So if we highlight it, all right, this should actually say percent complete dot text to make me really happy. Slacker. So percent complete dot text. So if we go click on this label, percent complete. So there's a formula here. It's like, hey, value of items complete. Right, so 12 minutes versus item total. So 12 divided by 100 times 100. And so then it says, hey, if the toggle over here is set to animate, then do uh, the timers, the toggles value times the duration. If not, just do one. Because what you're going to see is that on this text input where we put in how long Chewy spent, if we look at the on change, oh, that starts my timer. So that's the reason that when we change this from 12 to 44, then this percent starts calculating based on the animate, which causes the green stroke piece to get bigger. If we turn off animate and we change this to 77, it just jumps straight to 77. Okay, so back to our SVG. So percent complete dot text, that is the number of the percentage it is currently complete and of uh, the percentage that Chewy is complete to his goal, I should say. And so then the uh, dash array is then 100 minus that. So what I'm trying to do is I want the array to be the whole thing. Um, you know, I want it to be a, a, a dash and then a blank spot. And right, and that's how da uh, dash arrays work, is they are dash length and then blank spot length and then dash length blank lot, uh, percent. And so that's how I was able to calculate this automatically. And so then when I was messing with the circle to get it to start up here in the top, like we'd expect it to, I had to do what was called a uh, stroke dash offset. So offset it by 25 spots. So I know that sounds like super complicated, but what I would encourage you to do is grab my code, you know, borrow. Um, and then once you've got it, you can kind of massage and play with this. And my customer's solution, right? It was Jim's actually. 
uh, what we did, right, was we were fetching the percent complete that they were on their different uh, training task. And so we were just calculating it based on data in SharePoint, but that's how we were pulling it over. Cool. All right. So then if we go back over here to uh, even cooler, oh, why didn't that trigger? Let's go back. Oh my goodness. Oh, because the timer doesn't run when you're off, right? So even cooler. So we go here. So this one is calculating. So how are these cute little visual bars happening? And my fun little fireworks. So if we click in the gallery, what we're going to see is I have an image control right here. And so very similar, we've got that same kind of starting block as we're used to. But so then here we're like, all right, I define the gradient. And so this is where I'm like, all right, the three colors are red, green, and yellow. And so I did the red to 30%, right? Green goes full at 30%. And then at 80%, that's where yellow is. And so that's how we kind of got that nice, um, you know, visual that kind of, you know, colors, what would you expected? And my thought and the reason doing it this way is I kind of thought of green with someone who's in the happy middle, which is what I want. If you're over 80% in pay, that starts to be yellow. We should be asking, like, are we overpaying Chewy, who is currently napping about right there? So anyway, so that's how I did the gradients. And so then it's just a simple rectangle. Its width is 250, its height is 30. Right, notice it kind of corresponds to my view box to make my life easier. And so then the um, paint order, so the stroke gets painted first. The fill is transparent, so I made a rectangle that is transparent. Um, its stroke width is 50, which I kind of wanted to be giant. And then its stroke URL, right? So what is, stro sorry, the stroke color is this gradient up here. Got it. And then stroke dash array. And then this is where I had to write a bunch of code. But not really. This is power appsy stuff. So I just said take the hourly wage and divide it by 100 and then multiply it by 250. So that way I can figure out what percentage of 250 it would fill out. And then I multiplied that by the timer's value versus timer duration. That's what gives us that fun little animation effect. And then I did the second comma, and then the second stroke is a thousand because I wanted, I didn't want to have like a repetition. Like if we change this to 10, let's just see what happens. I'm gonna leave and come back to make it see. All right, it's like wacko, right? But so what's happening is it's filling the first section, right? This is how far this one should have filled. And it's doing a, a 10. And then once the 10 is done, it's then doing that same percentage again in a 10. So that looks really bad. But what I was really trying to show you was that, you know, that was kind of the formula that goes into making this thing. So we go back to that one. Um, so we'll change that back to 1,000. So I made it 1,000 because what I wanted to happen was that after... Um, after we went in and got it, right? So it's it's rendering that first dash, right? The first piece. And the thousand is saying, go around the perimeter with a blank spot, a thousand. And the, the perimeter is less than a thousand. So it's getting to the end. So it's not showing us the second. So the dash stroke is only going one spot. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, and if not, remember, you can go check out this, right? Because this is where it shows you more of these dash arrays. And so, you know, imagine we're using, we'll get rid of two of them. You know, we'll get rid of this one. We'll get rid of this one. We'll run that. So this says, give me a 10 and then do a zero, or then give me 10 blank. So if we change this to 20. Now, if we say run, we get long and then the tens. And so that's what I did. But I set the second one to 1,000. So then that way, because the whole length is only so long, so it showed the 20 and then it did 10,000 of blank space, which there isn't 10,000 blank space to show, so it doesn't show the second one. You know, if we change this back to a one, then we get little tiny little nuggets. So that's what it is. And you can also mess with these patterns. So you can be like, I want a 20 and a one and then a 10 and a three. And so then now we get a kind of a different little dash uh, piece. But th that's what we're doing over here to cause this. This is actually a rectangle and we're just taking advantage of its stroke to create this look that we wanted. All right, I've been talking for way longer than I want, but let's go, go talk about the examples for a minute. So if we go to the examples. So the other way that you can use these that is not immediately obvious um, is if we add an image part, so let's just grab another image. Let's go over here to the plus and do it 
So image, media, pull this over, drop it right here. And so when we drop that right here, the other thing that is possible is you can add a file. So add an image file. And so if I look on here, we've got one called like Power Apps 911 uh, SVG. So I have an SVG rendering of Chewy. And so if we look at that file, it is just all that crazy HTML, but it's in a file already. So if we open that up, I'll just replace the one that's already there. And so then that comes in. But what's nice about it, look, is now Chewy is a scalable vector. He doesn't get ugly or pretty based on the size because we're using a scalable vector graphic. So, and sometimes you'll download those off the internet because you want to be able to get SVGs. But if you, I could also, I, earlier today, I grabbed all the code out of Chewy's SVG file, and it's really just a base64 representation of Chewy with some other pieces wrapped around it. So, okay. So there's that. Um, we'll get rid of that real quick. Um, other things, I just, I, you know, for those of you that can download the app, I just wanted you to have different examples. I went and found some, you know, this is one. Um, so this is using Animate, right? We're, we're running out of time to talk about this, but you can do animation. So that's uh, animating the color. Here you can see that, you know, if you type it, it shows. So, you know, we did it. And so then now, it, you know, this is just that reminder that a text input's controlling this. Um, sometimes people like things like, you know, lines to point, like click here, right? If your people are having a hard time finding where to click things, um, <laughs> cute little fireworks, uh, other things that I've given, you know, in here. So these are the different SVG ref graphics of the, the power app stuff. Here's some drop shadowy things, fun, uh, text at a slant. So just lots of good little ideas here. Um, I also have, uh, the good blog linked here. So this is, um, Jacob's blog, I found he, he did a really good job of getting into more details. So like when I was trying to figure out um, animations, I kept finding myself in here reading. Like, so here's his spinning circle. You know, here's his little, uh, this is sets. So this is like making it from small to big. Uh, so there's the animation for this. Because really like to make that animation right there, right? That's all it takes because you're saying, hey, I defined this thing. And then I want to change the CX attribute from 30 to 470 over the course of five seconds and just do it on an infinite loop. And that's all animation really was, was understanding that CX was the X chord into this thing. I just want to animate it. And you can stack animations so you can uh, have multiple things going on. You can be changing the colors, all of that stuff. So, um, but yeah, so I threw some of the ones I really enjoyed over here and everything that I built was just a combination of like, all right, I need to figure out how to first make a gradient, right? And then I had to figure out how to make a bar. And then I had to figure out how to do an animation. And then I had to figure out how to do visible or not visible. You know, I just kept walking through, like learning little things, and then I would just shove them all together. I, I, I still don't feel like I understand any of this SVG stuff. I mean, that's probably not fair anymore. But it, it's, it's hard, you know, but it's just a matter of I just got in there and tinkered and I was able to produce all this. So. Just another reminder, if you want to download this, you want to get all of these, um, all these fun little things, you, you know, you probably don't really care about these things, but what you probably want is my beautiful, beautiful, this thing. So remember, you can download all these, training.powerapps911.com, the curated library. Um, you know, I guess I'd also just ask, do you have any questions? If you have questions like, hey, my code is not working, please don't put those in the comments. I will not be able to answer them. I'm happy to try. But I'm not going to know the answers. Um, you know, Power Apps 901, we do have some services. We've got some real devs that can help if you decide you do want like some real help building some of these types of solutions. You know, because for us, a lot of times, it's this idea that we can build visuals that are really awesome, but they aren't Power BI, right? We're getting Power BI look and feel without doing it. So, all right, that's enough of that. With all that, I'm going to say thanks and have a great day. Before you go, be sure to click on the subscribe button over here so that way you'll be notified when new videos come out. If you need any help or you want to work together, whether your problem is big or small, check us out at Power Apps 911. We do it all. I rhymed. Or if you're looking for more formal training offerings, we have those linked up here somewhere. So check them out. Thanks and have a great day.